Hello and welcome to Space Flight Now. I'm David Waters here at the Kennedy Space Center and we are getting ready for the Ares 1X launch. Let's take you over to the launch pad here at KSC and you can see that 327 foot tall rocket poised for a liftoff that will be scheduled for 8 a.m. on Tuesday morning. Now the only concern is weather. There can't be high clouds in the area. So if there is that, there is a four hour launch window they have from 8 a.m. to noon to go ahead and launch that. And there are a couple of days after that to have the Ares 1X launch. With me now is Jim Halsell from ATK. He's the Vice President of Space Exploration. And first of all, welcome to the show and tell me what your thoughts are as you see the rocket there on the pad. Well, thanks a lot. It's our, my pleasure to be here. I actually arrived earlier and I drove my rental car as close to the launch pad as they would let me just to, uh, to get an opportunity for my first personal time to see this rocket on the launch pad. And it's just spectacular. Uh, you know, thousands of people have been working a number of years to get to this moment. So not only is it an engineering first, but it's really a personal and professional first for a lot of people who have been associated with this program. Now, ATK's part in this, one of those parts is you build those solid rocket motor segments. You're the, the essentially the, the main thrust of this. You've got that four-segment booster that launches the space shuttle. Now, describe the difference between 1X and the shuttle. In this one, we've got the dummy top, essentially a dummy fifth stage. Right. We have uh, the four-segment booster, just like you have on the space shuttle. But then we have the fifth-segment simulator that will make it look and also duplicate the outer mold line of what we plan for Ares 1, a five-segment more powerful booster. On top of that, we call it the dummy upper stage, but that's really not fair. A lot of work went into the upper stage simulator by the Glenn Research Center and their contractors to make sure we had an exact duplicate and replica, both in size and shape and also weight and inertia of the actual upper stage. Continuing on up the rocket, the same for the service module and for the crew module, the Orion crew module, and then the launch abort system. Now, some 700 sensors outfitted across this rocket. What kind of data are you hoping to get back after launch? It, it, it's stuff that is so exciting to engineers, but it's hard to make it exciting to the public. But let me try. Uh, engineers, like I said, have worked literally years and devoted many, uh, many long nights trying to do the analysis and the design. Tomorrow, they're going to get back data that's really their final exam. That data is going to feed back to them exactly what happened, and they're going to be able to compare what they, what they forecast, what the design was supposed to operate like, compared to what actually happened. And the closer those two agree, the better our engineers did. To whatever degree they disagree, that's information that they can feed right back into a better, more perfect Aries 1 design. Let's talk about the timing of this. Obviously, the Augustine report has just come out, which uh, lays out options for NASA there. And you know, how does that affect what's, what this flight is going to be? Are there any concerns of yours that 1X might be the only Ares system to fly? Well, you know, the Augustine committee said very clearly and very loudly that uh, they see no technical issues that uh, are showstoppers to continuing the program and the path that we're currently on with Ares 1X, Ares 1Y, and then the Ares 1 uh, program. Uh, they have very clearly pointed out, and I think they've done the country a great service, that there are budget issues. There is not enough money, they said, to do everything that NASA is subscribed to do. So there needs to be a realignment between the money and the task. And I think we're going to see that happen over the next several months as the president comes out with his budget for 2011, as the Congress, of course, does what they're supposed to do, which is to uh, appropriate the funds to really move the program in the direction uh, that's best for the country. So there's going to be a number of months here where the story comes together and the Augustine Committee has really kicked that off. All right, last question for you. You've been to space five different times here, commander a few times, pilot a couple times. Would you like to be on something like this? I, I would. Uh, I, I think I'll wait until we get the upper stage going. Uh, <laughs> you want air. You want to be able to breathe. I, that's right. Uh, but, uh, you know, every former astronaut is, is still an astronaut in their own mind and I'm no different. I. Uh, I, just like every other astronaut who has or hopes to fly, would love to do it again. And I think Ares 1X is, is, is an exciting door uh, to the future of space exploration opening, hopefully, hopefully tomorrow at 8 a.m. Thanks very much, Jim Halsell. Much appreciated from ATK, and we appreciate your sponsorship as well. We'll be watching here at Space Flight Now. Miles O'Brien will be joining me, and as well as Leroy Chow. We will start our webcast Tuesday morning at 6 a.m. Eastern. What is that, 10 a.m. GMT? So join us for that. Thanks very much.